Hey everyone! Welcome back to some more Let's Play the Occult Chronicles. In the last episode, Doctor Whom the Second explored most of the east wing of the second floor of the mansion. Uh, we really are struggling to get into locked wooden doors. The house is on to us and how we solve the puzzles it's been throwing up in front of us. And as such, has made it much more difficult for us to get into the locked rooms that it keeps its doors in front of. As we've seen incredibly difficult <laughs> roles for us in trying to solve those puzzles. Oh my goodness, wow, is tough. But we're managing it. We haven't died quite yet, though we did lose quite a bit of sanity during the last episode. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, as long as we can keep ourselves from losing about another 13 in this particular episode. Doctor Whom the Second has nine wands and nine pentacles, which should indicate that we are super good at using psionic powers and using magic powers. He's not very physical though with only four swords and three cups indicating he's mm, mediocre at fighting and not very good when it comes to physical effort we have only one talisman so far but we have quite a bit of gear we picked up a remington shotgun in the weapon uh, the gun case room last episode We picked up the sign of Malachim and an Atlantean lens. These will hopefully help us with combats that we'll have in the future to make up for our low uh, swords and cups attribute score. And we picked up the High Priestess as another Arcana card, which will remove all wounds and impairment cards from our inventories after we use this to take a trick. We have quite a few more edges now as well, grabbing Eldritch Mark and Mumbled Wisdom. We discovered that Torque Sense isn't working properly either. It should give us a second scryed card during the lockpick game, but it's not. It's only giving us one, which stinks. <laughs> that was a waste of an edge upgrade. We'll probably level a third time and see if it actually does anything, but this might only let you have one scryed card. Oh, what else do we have, by the way, up here? We found another clue token near the end of the last episode, and we have a crap ton of quests that we are working on. It'll feel so good to complete a great many of these. Now, before I go on, there is something I quickly want to talk about. It is related to this game, and I feel really saddened by this. Cryptic Comet does not exist any longer, from what I can tell. The website is gone, and I haven't seen Vic Davis respond on the Steam forums for the only game he has up there on Steam, Armageddon Empires. You can't get this game any longer, nor Solium Infernum, nor Six Gun Saga. I believe another company has got the rights to Solium Infernum and is working on a remake that looks rather promising. I myself thought maybe I should play Solium Infernum this Halloween, but I don't have the installer anymore on this computer. I have save game files, but not the game itself. I don't know where it went. And that's a real shame too. The game would crash pretty frequently and force me to restart from the get-go because playing Reaper mode in that game, uh, it's, it's like this one. Uh, I'm going on a tangent. I will, let me stop that. It saddens me to see that Cryptic Combat is gone because although Although I don't like the way many of these games have been balanced, I do love the presentation 
and the ideas that Cryptic Comet had in the games that were created by that company, which was, to my knowledge, just Vic Davis. I feel like the world's worse off for that site not existing anymore. I may not agree with all the design decisions gone into these games, but I have liked them, despite some of the issues that they have. If I didn't, for say, like the Occult Chronicles, I wouldn't be playing it every year for you guys to herald in the Halloween season. I just would stop playing it. Which I've done in the past for games that I lost my patience with. And although I complain a lot about this, I do still like this game. It's... I don't know. It's sad. It would be as if I couldn't get the Spirit Engine 2 again from Mark Pay's website to play that game in the future. Thankfully, I do still have the installer for that one. But this... It's a shame. Cryptic Comic Games was stuff I was playing since like 2007 or so. 2009. And was one of the reasons why I started my YouTube channel. So I could actually begin recording Armageddon Empires and show people this amazing game that I had found. And Armageddon Empires still remains one of my favorite turn-based strategy games. Thanks to the fact that the AI doesn't cheat in that game. It plays by all the same rules that you play with. And is pretty well balanced, all things considered, also. I very much like that one. Well, in any case, I thought it was interesting to... That was an interesting discovery that I made. Shame. And now it's time for us to explore the hall bathroom. Another class one haunting. Okay, so... My goodness, look how much the game has increased the difficulty modifier, up to 16. But we get 10 tricks and 10 draw, which means the game's fun at that point. So we're going to go ahead and also try to continue just trying to destroy the ghost with our psychic powers. Now, a heads up, that at this point in the game, because we have 9 wands and 9 pentacles, the game will no longer hold punches if we lose these encounters, even against something as simple as a class 1 haunting. We could get a instant insanity card if we're super unlucky here, or an impairment from now on. So, we gotta keep that in mind as we fight these creatures. We have a great hand. I see a king of swords and a king of cups. And we have a queen of wands as our high cards. We also still have Vaporized Mine and Dominate if we need them, but hopefully we won't. Let's go and get started. Four of Swords. At the very least, we should pay the, play the page. I'm willing to risk that there might be a Sword Face card up here. And we'll start with the page. Two of Pentacles. We have a three, so we can take that card. Eight of Pentacles. Ace of Wands. Okay, we're getting to the point now where we're running out of cards to flip over. But we can still win the challenge by playing the six. I, mm, I'll play the queen. Oh, now we're, we're earning points over our target number. Ace of Swords. There's five cards left. I'll play the six. We'll keep the king. Two of swords. All right, at this point, the odds of one of these being another swords card is kind of low. So we will play the king on the two. We can take the two of wands with our six. Darn it! There was a knight of swords. Okay. And we didn't get any cups cards up here. But we still win by 15 points. So we're drawing seven cards. Okay, we destroyed it.
a lot of courage, and some experience points. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, and some experience points. Three more. Support item edge. Read the manual. Whenever a support item special ability is used to bump a card up or down, X is added to the bump value. I don't care about that. Whenever a, su a support item special ability is used, non-face cards can be bumped up to face cards. Okay, so this could be useful because we can change no our number cards with our toolkits into face cards. Uh, face cards could also be targeted here to bump their values up and down, but generally I like making my number cards, which are far more often the thing I'm, I'm trying to improve uh, better. Wait, no, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Um, our toolkit lets us target a revealed face card and bump its value down. So Mr. Fixit would be better for us, not Jury Rigger. Rigger. Oh, hey, whenever whenever we use a support item special ability, we get to draw cards. That could be useful. Uh, we can get free points when we use our toolkit. X additional unrevealed tricks are placed on the board. That could all, This actually would probably be very useful because we need tricks. We are, Tricks look like they're based on our cups value, and we don't have a good cups value. We could also get more uses out of our toolkit. I think we'll go with Gearhead, something I almost never select. Whenever a support item special ability is used, X additional unrevealed tricks are placed on the board, max of 10, where X is the level of the edge. We'll take it. We only have one support item that we can use at the moment, the toolkit, but it will give us another trick on the board. Speaking of which, by the way, a locked skull door. You see a locked wooden door with a carved grinning ornamental skull mounted on it. The skull glares at you ominously, and you feel the hairs on the back of your neck stand on end. The skull's teeth look like they might be keys of some type. You examine the skull closely, and note that the teeth are indeed keys and the eye sockets are buttons. Maybe they can be depressed in some sequence to gain entrance? So this is not a lock challenge, so we can't use our toolkit here. We'll try anyway. King of Swords, Page of Swords are our two high cards. Eight of Wands. We have a Ten of Wands. That's our only wand card. Five of Pentacles. We have a Six of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles. We have an Eight of Pentacles. Ace of Wands. We have no more wand cards. We have no wands. Take the two with the six. Take that ace with our nine. We're not going to get any sword cards up here. A two of swords. We can use the king and win by a... What is that? Nine points? Not bad. The death's head strikes you as somehow familiar. Suddenly you remember the illuminated manuscript, Secrets of the Lost, where you saw it, and you try the combinations of various formula found in the dark tome. Eventually the mechanism clicks and the door opens. Or a fortune. Very good. I think we have like five luck now. We should start earning Arcana cards and the like from some of this stuff. Um. I'll work on a Talisman Edge. A library. Seems like we would find the books we're looking for for the Witch's Coven in here somewhere. You see, rows and rows of books. Most of the material is quite pedestrian and what you would expect to find in the library of a large estate like this. However, occasionally you come across an item that is more esoteric and you wonder what secrets and knowledge might be hidden here. You'll never know, unless you look, of course. You decide to in inspect the bookshelf more closely. You scan over the titles and occasionally pull out a volume to get a better look. Good hand? 
Lots of face cards, at least. Two knights and two pages. A bunch of other very low numbers, though. Threes and aces. Well, let's start flipping. We have we do have a one nine, I think. Six of wands. Play our knight to take it. Five of wands. The only thing that we can't take that the page could, that the nine can't, is the ten. And the odds of the ten being up here is very low. So we'll play the page. Seven of wands. Cups, we only have one cups card. Queen of pentacles can get our two. Ah, well, that sucked. We weren't able to use our swords face cards. We'll draw three victory cards. This looks promising. You think you might have found something. This was not the one we had to search for the witches. There's a chance we find a spell up here. Or maybe some arcane energy. Ray of Chasmodai. You searched this bookshelf before. Perhaps you didn't know what to look for at the time? Roll one bone and select a non-face card in your hand to discard, then subtract the numerical value of that card from X random revealed trick cards, where X is the number of pentacles rolled. Then draw a card. So you choose a number card, discard it. All the cards on the trick field are lowered by that number that are revealed. And then you get to draw a new card. Interesting. It's a hypo uh, Hyperborean. Hyperborean? Hyperborean spell. This is not affected by our other etches, then. <coughs> You're confronted with a creature from some type of horrible nightmare. It towers over seven feet, seven feet tall and seems covered in a sticky, translucent slime. You can only describe it as a combination of a snail, cucumber, and octopus. You fight to control your revulsion. This thing is not of our world. It must be from another dimension entirely. You are overcome with dread and a sickening revulsion. Your eyes wide in disbelief as a strange creature turns to look at you. King of Pentacles? Nine, a uh, ten of wands are our high cards here. Queen of Pentacles! Hello! We can actually take you. Ten of swords. We have an eight of swords for you. Take the three with our nine. You have no doubt that you can overcome the fear that this nightmarish thing wishes to instill in you. The Talizrati! You remember your briefings on the Tunska event of 1908? A portal had been opened by this interdimensional race of aliens. An invasion had been foiled by a precursor to the Odd when the portal generator was overloaded. It had been a narrowly won victory. An interdimensional war had followed. The creature is obviously a group leader. There will be more of these things around. Well, I didn't add an option here to deal with it, so we're forced to fight it in physical combat, which is not very good for us. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. No, no, no. We do have an, a, a, a sorcery option here. I'm surprised we don't have a shotgun option here. But we'll use sorcery against the Talisrati named Zer. Okay, so I did not add this. This was this is normally here. Uh, all right, let's do it. This is obviously the leader of the group that dissected poor Mackin. You shout out its name and tell it why it must die. You then unleash a surge of sorcerous energy. Ooh, two pages. Page of wands, page of swords are our high cards. What do we have for spells? Okay, since we have other sword cards and wand cards, let's at least make sure that we can put those out on the field here so we have a chance of playing our pages. So, touch of Peralicus to start. We succeeded by rolling less than our pentacles attribute to cast a spell. We get to choose six non-face cards in our hand. We'll choose the three. We'll choose the four, the six. By the way, you can click OK if you're done with those picks. Um, we'll give you 
give you the seven. And another seven, and that will do. Oh, look at what we stole! Queen of Swords, Queen of Wands, Queen of Cups, Knight of Wands. Wow, there was a lot of face cards up here. Wow. My goodness, I am so glad that we did that in that spell. Ten of Swords. We have the Page of Swords to take that. Two of Cups. I think we put another Cups up here, so we'll play the Ten. Six of Cups. We'll play our Queen. Seven of Swords. We'll play that Queen. Seven of Cups. We are out of Cups. Seven of Pentacles. Play the ten. I don't know why I'm thinking about that one. Three of Wands. We can play our Queen. Four of Swords. Play our Eight. Two of Wands. Play our Knight. There was the King of Swords up here, too. One, two, three, four, five? Face cards. Half of the board were face cards. My goodness. I am glad we had that one spell. You channel everything you have, and despite putting up a good fight, the Talasrati ends up in a puddle of goo. Justice is done. It would be nice if we could get justice from this. Please, game. That would make so much sense for you to do that for me. Rain of Sulfur, another spell. Four energy, so we will charge Touch of Paralysis. Rain of Sulfur, what do you, what, I can't see what you do here. So, um, I guess we put a little more into Sign of Malachim. We definitely want to hold on to our Eldritch spells since we are an Eldritch caster. And we have two more experience points. All right, so before I choose the Talisman's Edge, I only want to choose it if it's going to give... How can I describe this? Um. Well, let's just do it, and I'll, I'll talk about what results we have here. Okay, so. Water Attuned. Water Harmony, Water Affinity, Water Amplification are our choices. Normally. So this this lowers the chance that a Water or Cups Talisman will be released. This adds a chance that the Water Talisman uh, will be triggered. This adds a chance that uh, when if it is removed, I still get a chance to keep it. The benefits of any water talismans you possess are doubled. I don't quite understand what that means. But I added a flip, a flip, uh, how to describe this? A side grade to these talisman upgrades. So normally, Sword of Air would not be available here. I have added it as a pick for this. What this says is that if I possess an air talisman here, and I choose it, I'm sorry, uh, and mm, if I possess an air talisman, we get plus one swords for every air talisman that we possess. Very useful, but I do want cups, not swords. So I think what I'm going to do is take water attuned. X percent is subtracted from the chance that a water, cups, talisman that you possess, which we have none of, will be released when placed on a result card that is revealed where X is two times the level of the edge. And then we'll begin working towards... Hmm. Another psychic talent, I think. We are running out of Pentacles inventory space. And what does this do? 
Roll one moan and select a non-face card in your hand to discard, and then add the numerical value of that card to X random non-face played cards of the same suit, where X is the number of pentacles rolled. Then you'll look, oh my god, that's, we're just going to drop that. That's a lot of text. Choose a card in your hand, discard it. Add that numerical value to cards that you've already played of the same suit on the board, and then you get to draw a card. There could potentially be another clue token on this floor. <coughs> I don't like the empty room, but we'll search it. <coughs> you feel the pressure plate to press underneath your foot and hear a sizzling sound as a spray of acid hurls towards you. You take a millisecond to take in the situation and pick the best angle for your roll. You hope that it will make the difference. Evade traps. Oh, we have a fantastic hand. King of Pentacles, Queen of Cups, Knight of Swords, Knight of Wands. We have face cards for every single suit. We'll play the Knight on the five. Except, oh no, we do have Pentacles. Yep, King on the Ace, and we have won this challenge. Your quick thinking saves the day. We have the Colonel Von Pelt quest. He's not going to be in this room. I suppose we can at least walk into it. One of these will probably be the alligator, and the other one of these will be the heads on the uh, on the walls. We'll come back for this when we find Van Pelt, who should not be in that room. Another class one haunting. Well, let's go ahead and. Destroy the ghost. King of Cups, Queen of Swords are our high cards. Take the nine with our Page of Pentacles. Uh, I'll take the two of swords with our page. And I can get our ace. Knight of Cups. We have the King of Cups for you. <coughs> oh, allergies. Take the 10 with our queen and the four with our five. And a ton of courage. My goodness, I love these rewards when we get lucky enough to, to destroy the ghosts. There's all our courage reclaimed. Psychic talent. Roll one bone and scry. X random not revealed trick cards. Allows allow suits and values to be seen without revealing them. Where X number of wands rolled. We'll take that. This will go to the attic. We'll come back for that. The seance room. There's a crystal ball that could be gained as a reward for this. Let's try it. You notice the crystal ball set in the large wooden table almost immediately. We've obviously stumbled upon a seance room of some type. As you approach the crystal ball, it's suddenly filled with a swirling cloud of white smoke and a face materializes inside. You are caught off guard by the sudden appearance of the supernatural fortune teller. Queen of Pentacles and a we have two nines as well as our high cards. Four Pentacles will play the five, hoping we can play the Queen on something better. That goes our only Cups card. Uh oh. We were able to do that, and we won because of that as well. You have seen things far worse than this. In fact, this isn't your first run-in with the Crystal Ball and the Fortune Teller. No, we tend to find this every year. The face of the smoke begins to speak. You soon realize that it doesn't seem to be aware that you are even there. It seems to be communicating with the spirit world directly. 
You catch glimpses of motion around the periphery of the table. Ghostly shapes soon appear, seated around the table. You could swear you hear a tambourine rattle. I love the idea that the ghosts are reaching out to the human world. Doing either of these, I know there's a chance for an instant insanity card, because I have totally drawn it once during it, this encounter. So this is tricky to do. But if we join the seance, there's a chance we can get the crystal ball. And I want that. You sense the opportunity here to manipulate the power inside the crystal ball and gather information from it. You decide to join in the seance and sit down on an empty seat. King of Wands? Queen of Wands are our high cards. Let's third eye. Well, that doesn't help us that much. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We have a single sword card. We'll take the four with what we have there. Let's flip over other cards. Do we have swords? We have no more swords. Page of Pentacles. We don't have an answer for you. Seven of Pentacles. We have an eight. Seven of Swords. So, these are what we have left. We can win by playing the king on the ten. I think, though, I want to use Dominate. And choose the King of Cups, which is discarded and earns us more points. And now we're winning the challenge. Now we can take the Three of Cups with our Knight, the Ace of Cups with a Six, and the Ten of Wands with a King. So we earned three plus three, six more points for using Dominate. Unfortunately, that was two Psychic Talents which means quite a bit of pushback has been generated. The face of the smoke introduces herself as Madame Leota, and you have no difficulty in establishing a report with her. She reveals to you some variable valuable information. Or could. No crystal ball, that's a shame. But we do get a ton of energy, which is also very good. Uh, since I don't know if I'm keeping Rain of Sulfur, I'm not going to charge it. We'll put all of these points into our Alatian Lens, though. We need some of this pushback to vanish. I think every step you take decreases it by like 1% or something of that sort. Still looking for another clue token up here. The crystal ball is super useful because it increases your pentacles by, I think, one point, and also can be used to reveal where the final room's located. That is crucial in the basement, so that's kind of unlucky we didn't get it. But whatever. I've had it, I think, the past three years running, playing the game. So it's a bit, it will be a bit odd not having it with me. You see an oddly soft glowing light in the gloom. It seems to be coming closer. Then suddenly its shape becomes clear. You see the billowing outline of what was once a woman dressed in 19th century clothing, but there was no substance there. She's a ghost. A brush with the supernatural is always disconcerting, no matter how many times you experience it. You must fight to keep your sanity. King of Swords, Page of Swords are our high cards. We have a Ten of Wands to take the Nine. Ace of Cups, we have our Single Cups card of Four to take you. Take the Knight of Swords with our King, and we are dominating this encounter. A textbook case of the Class 3 full roaming vapor floats out in front of you. The Class 3 has no discernible remnants of its previous life. 
It's basically a raw supernatural spirit with the most meager of entropic trappings, bipedal shape and sometimes clothing. It starts to zigzag towards your position as if it was chasing something. These hauntings can be dangerous if provoked. I have done no modding to this encounter, so we're forced to use our psychic talents if we want to dispel it. We could flee, but I want to search the room. So we're going to engage in a psychic duel to destroy the ghost's presence in this dimension and send it to the spirit world. King of Swords and two pages. One of Wands, one of Pentacles are our high cards. We won't use talents for this one. We have a Page of Pentacles to take that seven. I will win the challenge and play our king on that eight. Take the five with a six. We can take the three with the four. We can take the seven with our page. I don't think we're likely to find another wands card between the page and an eight up here. And we didn't. In fact, we would have lost a page. Your mind gets the upper hand after a brief struggle and simply folds the ghost up on itself. It disappears without a sound. Oh, wow. I didn't realize we had six experience points saved now. Um, Psychic Talents Edge, maybe? Let me save the game first. Hmm. You guys should know that I am not actually, I am not actually um, backing up the save game this year. So this is win or lose. There's no, there's no second attempt. In the past, we've failed, I think, twice, both years initially, to defeat the Elder. Really tricky to find him before we ran out of time. And then I would reload and we try it again, and we would succeed at finding him in the basement. But this year, we get one attempt only at it. Um... Let's go for a Persuasion Deception Edge. Any initial trick card placed on the board for any Persuasion or Deception challenge that is not a face card is bumped down by X, where X is a random number between 1 and the level of the edge. I do like my scrying options. I kind of wish you could... That was just a thing you got naturally. Let's pick Empathetic, empathetic Listener. At the beginning of any Persuasion or Deception challenge, X random tricks are placed on the board in a scryed, visible state where X is a level of the edge. We'll take it. Heroic Feats Edge, huh? Let's go for that next and pray we can have something that increases my stats by one. I love the blood under the bed there. It looks like something tr tried to, to keep itself from going under the bed. Look at those fingernail scratches. God, it's awful. Speaking of awful, you feel your foot pressed down on the pressure plate and then hear the click as a tablet hits the pan of acid. A cloud of poisonous gas erupts from the floor beneath you. Oh, man. You notice that the gas is rising in the cloud as if it was being shot upward. You decide to cover your mouth and hit the deck to get out of the way. King of Cups is still not enough to let us win. So we will absolutely use Burst of Speed to start. Failed. We will then try using Calm Sidestep. Failed. All right, that's it. Let's go ahead and see what we can do with a King of Cups, two fives, and a four. Well, we definitely need to play the King. And we win. Your quick thinking keeps you out of the poison gas cloud. My goodness, that was super lucky. Hmm. This is probably the pipe worker. Y yep, this, I'm sorry, this is what I meant when I said pipe worker. <laughs> By pipe worker, I meant plumber. And not, uh... J a jerk, the uh, slang term in Underrail. You are suddenly confronted with the appearance of a ghost that seems to phase in from out of thin air. 
It stares at you and then turns away to kneel down and mimic the act of working on something around the sink. Suddenly, ghostly red tentacles leap out of the plumbing, and the ghost works violent, violent, works vigilantly to keep them at bay. No, that's not quite right. I can't pronounce it. Despite all your training, you can't pronounce that word, and the manifestation sends tendrils of fear deep into your mind. Ten of wands and, and a ten of cups are high cards for this one. I don't think you can get an instant insanity card from a horror challenge, not unless you're in the basement. You can't quite get used to this. Maybe you should check into early retirement if you get out of this. You are watching the ghost of some long dead handyman go about fixing an imaginary leak on a sink. The ghost begins to whistle a haunting melody and goes about its business paying you no heed. The red ghost tentacles get you to slip out of the plumbing and the ghost plumber stolidly works to fix the leak. You sense that the ghost isn't focused on this location. It probably travels all over the estate making supernatural repairs. <laughs> You decide to enter a trance and use your skills as a medium to find out what this ghost is up to. Perhaps it knows something about the house that can help you. Alright, we have the a scry. Unfortunately, that tells us that we don't really want to click on that card because we don't have the option to take a Knight of Swords with what we have in our hand. We'll play the Queen on the Ace. Page on the 10. And we've won the challenge. I'll take the five with our nine. Okay, the odds of either of these being the pentacle card is low. You establish contact and fists psychically clear your throat. The ghost looks up at you with a troubled look on its face. It wants your help. I won't be able to fix this without me wrench. Can you go and fetch it for me? I left it around here somewhere. Had a big leak and needed to seal it. These damn things are everywhere. <coughs> the ghost goes back to his work. It looks like a wrench might indeed help him out. You wonder just what type of wrench he needs. I was hoping it would be in this room. It's going to be in a bathroom. So it might be in this room right next to... Right next... Uh, not next door? Oh, wow. An angry poltergeist. The hairs on the back of your neck stand on end before you even see anything. You sense a supernatural presence and unfocused rage. Suddenly, books, cups, and anything that is lying loose are swirling the air around you. You realize immediately that you're confronting a poltergeist. The anger from the supernatural creature is palpable and seems to flow from its turbulent motion. The rage isn't directed personally at you, but rather the living, a group of which you belong to for now. Two kings. One of the swords, one of wands are a high card, so I don't think we're losing the horror check. I don't think we're losing the horror check. <laughs> there we go. Uh, no wand cards. We still won. You're confronting a classic poltergeist, a disembodied spirit animated by a powerful human emotion like rage, fear, or even lust. In this case, you sense a general anger directed towards the living. You know from experience that these spirits can be very dangerous. So, normally you have to defeat it psychically. I think I added two other options. Bash the ghost to someplace else, or destroy all the things. Let's, I guess we'll go ahead and read these really quick, because I'm pretty sure I add them normally. You're unable to defeat the creature through psychic means, but you are sure you can make it someone else's problem. <laughs> Maybe this was already here, but I don't think it was. I know I added this one. It seems to be bound to this particular room. If you can destroy everything, it could use against you. Books, cups, and the remains of those things. It will be defenseless. Grab a piece of wood that was flying in the air towards you. It's time to do some damage. <laughs> Alright, so we have the best chance to either use psychic powers or use spells. Let's use spells here. You're unable to defeat the creature through psychic means, but you're sure you can make it someone else's problem. Ooh. Okay, not as bad as I thought it was. King of Pentacles and two knights. One of Pentacles, one of Swords are our high cards. Some okay numbers. So let's start by using the touch of Paralsius. 
We successfully rolled lower than our pentacles, and we cast a spell successfully. Two non-face cards can be placed up there. So we'll swap out the three of pentacles. And we'll swap out... I'm oh, sorry, the Ace of Wands, and we'll swap out... Oh, wait. We get three cards? We get three cards. Okay, so we're swapping out the Three of Pentacles. We're swapping out the... Wait. What is going on here? Oh my goodness, what just happened? <laughs> what cards got flipped? I think we lost an Ace and the Three of Pentacles. That was really weird. The check mark was still sitting there the entire time. Okay, so let's play the game. Page of Swords. We have a Knight of Swords. We can take that. Ace of Wands. That was the Ace we put up there. And we had a Two of Wands, so we can take it. And now we've won the challenge. Page of Cups. Give you the Five. Eight of Swords. We have a Six. Eight of Pentacles. We have a King. Nine of Pentacles, we have a Knight. Three of Cups, we have a Four. King of Cups, we can't stop you. And we win. We don't need to use any other spells. We're winning by enough points that we draw the max number of victory cards. So otherwise, I might have considered using uh, Ray of Chasmodai. Wait. Roll one bonus, select a non-face card in your hand, and then subtract the miracle value card from X re random revealed trick cards. Why can't I cast this? Combat sorcery battle. Oh, is it because it's a dispel? That's strange. I guess because it's a sorcery dispel, even though this says sorcery here, it has to be sorcery combat, I guess? Uh, Really weird that we can't use it. But we still won. We don't. I guess we don't care. It's just a bit weird that the rules don't seem to apply, or are applied haphazardly sometimes. You open a portal to the Dreamlands, hurling it and all the books, cups, and jars it was spinning around through. Now you're thinking with portals. <laughs> this feels too good that I wrote this. Vic probably wrote this. Oh, screw you, game. That was a tough fight, generally. Okay, we have another mouth. Oh, you know what? I like this. I like this. So, whenever we get this showing up, we actually have to pass a horror check first. Normally, that's not the case for encounters, but it does make sense for this mission. Alright, so the first thing we have to do is resist the horror. A king and a page are our high cards. There goes our only cups. Take the page with our king. Take that three with our page. And we've won. With that, at least. Okay, well... Psychic duel? You can sense an intelligence behind this possession. You decide to focus your psychic talents on driving back the psychokinetic turmoil that is manifested here. King of Cups, King of Wands are high cards. A ten of cups, and then we, we drop down to a six and lower. Two of swords, we have a five for you. Seven of cups. I'm going to think we have a better chance to play the king up here. We'll play the ten. Page of Cups, we do have a king for you. And we have a king for that page. Some aces on the board. You went through a trance and push back at a lo lo local, local psychokinetic energy. It tries to evade your grasp, but you finally manage to contain it and disperse it to other areas of the house. No doubt the evil entity will reclaim it, but for now you are safe. Three experience points. Okay, let's save the game again before I choose this. So 
sometimes I read something improperly and take a feat that is not very good. Whenever an intellect heroic feat is performed that requires a card to be selected, nope. After the use of an intellect heroic feat, X points add, nope. After use of an intellect feat, add a random counter action mark. After use of an int oh intellect heroic feats, uh no, no. During the results phase of any successful challenge, there's an X percent chance that a single nothing of no. X is subtracted from the total increments points of any heroic feat cards in your cup's inventory. We could hold more stuff if we take hidden talents. X is add no. No. Actually, Braveheart isn't so bad because uh, it lowers the courage cost of cards. It's only for the first one you use. X additional uses of all intellect heroic feats. We don't have those. No, we don't have those. We don't have those. We don't have that. We don't have combat heroic feats. No. Well, this sucks. We have one, we have no combat heroic feat cards. We have two evade, trap, defensive heroic feat cards. These are all deal with intellect heroic feats, which we don't have any of. So hidden talents could be taken. Uh, X is tracked from the total increments points of any heroic feat cards in your cup's inventory. So we could actually have something else in our cup's inventory. After the use of an intellect heroic feat, a random counter action marker is removed from an unrevealed trick card. What the heck is that? I don't even, I don't know what a counter action marker is. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that was implemented. Uh, let's see. So we're going to go with hidden talents. It's the only thing here that we actually can benefit from. So we'll gain back, I think, one point of weight. And to do that, we have to go back to our, there we go. Yep. So it's not all heroic feats. It's one heroic feat. Basically, you gain. Let me let me go here and, and explain. Uh, where is it? There it is. So for every point in this, we get to lower the weight of heroic feats by one. For one particular, uh, so if we have three points in this and we possess four heroic feats. We've lowered their cost by three totals. We'd have one of whatever our cups is, for example. God, I, I'm doing a, a worse job describing it than the description did. Another clue token. Minus one to the target level. You hear strange sounds coming from the walls, like fluids are moving about. Either the plumbing has gone completely bad, or something is not right. Well, that makes sense for what we're about to do, because this is the wrench. You see a large wrench that has been attached to a very old steam pipe that runs along the top of the wall. The wrench seems to be the focus of something supernatural, possessing a slight aura of some sort. The aura radiates a hint of eldritch evil, as far as you can tell. But it's more like a warning, danger, caution. We do not have a good chance of this. Five tricks, ten draw is acceptable, but eleven target number, because it requires a strength check. Cups is a primary suit. We'll give it one try. This this can be a quest we simply don't bother with. You decide to twist the wrench and remove it. It looks old and nearly rusted onto a, the bolt, but sometimes kicking a horse nest stirs things up. Are you sure about this? It is a lock, so we should be able to use our, our toolkit. So we see a page of wands and a nine of pentacles scried. So, okay, so we do have two cards which are scried here. 
Okay, that's good. All right, so it's working. That one edge is working. So, since we only have a page of pentacles, and I am scared that we'll flip over a king or queen and lose the page, we immediately use it to take that nine. We'll use the... Ah, uh, we'll use our toolkit. On the eight. To lower it to a seven. Then we can take it. We flipped over a two of cups. That's interesting. The odds of either of these being a cups card is not very good. So let's play our king on that two. We'll play our king on that page. And we win the challenge. It wasn't easy, but you pull the wrench up on the wrench until it grudgingly comes free. At first, nothing happens, but then the pipe begins to rattle. Maybe this wasn't just a good idea after all. You step back from the pipes, but it's too late. Tendrils of red vapor swirl out from the pipe and coalesce into giant tentacles. You can feel an oppressive eldritch evil now permeate the room. You can feel its hunger. The tentacles seek you out, and you are certain that they want to consume your soul. You fight to keep your courage from utterly leaving you at this crucial moment. The tentacles intend to floss with your soul, and you find the idea very disturbing. Page of Wands, Knight of Pentacles are high cards. Okay, we passed the horror check. You stand your ground and maybe even feel a bit stronger. The ghost tentacles flail out at you for attempting to wrap oh, at you attempting to wrap themselves around you and then seek out your soul. It's an embrace that would leave your body lifeless on the cold floor and your essence transformed into some, into some bizarre part of a spiritual food chain. We actually have a better chance of fighting it than fleeing it. So, you know that you can fight and even destroy this apparition by channeling and directing your psychokinetic energy. But you have no doubt that failure will be very costly. King of Swords, Knight of Swords. And that's all we have for, for face cards. It's not bad, though. I will use Third Eye here. Okay, we see a Two of Swords, an Ace of Swords, and two Pentacle cards. We can't take the Eight of Pentacles, but we can take the Three. So let's take that Three to start. Queen of Swords, we have the King for you. Give the page our Ace. Take the Seven of Cups, and we have won the challenge. You beat back the ghostly tentacles and crumple them up into a ball. You open up a small ethereal tear in our dimension and stuff the ghostly ball within. The Sunburst, an air card. That's a shame. We would have gained plus one swords had I chosen the Sword of Air, but it's too late now. Still, Lord Talisman is useful. Um... We'll take a second talent edge. If you possess at least one psychic talent card, X is attracted from the target level at the start of any psychic or combat challenge where X is a random number between one and the level of the edge. It's probably just one level. If you possess one psychic talent, Access from unrevealed tricks or place of the board. I don't think we really need that. You know, I don't really 100% know how psychic pushback works. It's my belief that it has a chance to change victory cards into lost cards and it can make them far worse depending on how much pushback you have. 
So I'm going to take death warning on the off chance where we start using our psychic talents a great deal more often. It will reduce the amount of psychic pushback we are earning. Then we can complete the quest. You decide to tell the ghost that you found the wrench and pretend to give it to him. Well done! I'd hoped that you would now be my apprentice, but it looks like you were too smart or quick for that. Oh well, time's a wasted. Got more of these holes to plug. This one here was just a small leak. With that said, the ghost vanishes. Mental dexterity and intellect heroic feat. We'll take a look at that together in a little bit. And one experience point. We are running out of things to take. Guess we'll grab a locker device edge. Where did that go? Wands gets our intellect heroic feats. Roll one bone and then select X non-face cards in hand where X is the number of wands rolled and bump their card values up plus Y, where Y is your wands attribute plus X. Then, okay, so we're gonna add 10 to all the cards we roll a die for. Then we get to draw a card. Puzzles, lore, and persuasion. Alas, it's not traps, not evade, but it'll still hopefully prove useful when we're down in the basement. And now, let's turn in one more quest and then we'll call the session. Did we leave anything over here? We didn't find the witch's spells yet, did we? Where's their backyard entrance? It's near us. We should probably go back up. Oh, it could be over here, but it might be also be in the attic. I think what we'll do is we'll turn in these two quests. Actually, we'll turn in this one quest, and then we'll call the session, and we'll go into the attic in the next episode. You decide to give the gentleman ghost his odd cigars. You hand over the charred fingers and witness the delight on the ghost's face. Oh, I know it's a bad habit that will probably kill me, but the afterlife has such few genuine pleasures. Thank you, good sir. Here is something for the effort. The wave. Oh, a cups. A cups talisman. Very good. Yeah, we're going to want to make sure we get that release chance to 0%. All edge upgrades have to be put into lowering this because when we get traps, I we fail traps, I think this will show up to try to protect us. And we're going to want to select this every time we can. An arcana card. You're immune to the effects of any instant insanity card that is revealed during the results phase. Well, this card is in your inventory. And an experience point. Alright, guys. So we'll stop here. That's wonderful. Yeah. We just have to hope that when we choose this talisman edge, it will be... Uh, it will give us these uh, cups upgrade. We can get plus one more cups for every uh, cups for every water talisman we possess. I hope that's the case. Any case, we'll stop here. Thank you again for watching, everyone, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.